Cool. Welcome back to part two, Dream Team. Let's get into it. So in this particular part, we now have our web scraper working and we want it to run at particular intervals so we can regularly take this data and save it. And so to do that, we are going to implement a cron functionality using a cron function that takes a millisecond amount and a function. <clears throat> and so inside of this function, we're going to define a second function and this is going to be the callback. And how the callback works is the first thing we do is we clear the timeout, which you'll see where that comes from in a second. The second thing we do is we await the function call. And the third thing we do is we set the timeout and we once again pass it back, the callback and the millisecond amount to wait for to re-execute this logic. And so with these five lines of code, well, it's going to be a few more, this program will essentially continually execute running the function that we pass in, which will be this run function just here. <clears throat> and so at the very bottom of this function, we are first going to have to actually initialize this callback on the first pass. And so this is going to be let timeout equal to set timeout. And once again, we just pass it the callback in the millisecond amount. And then finally, we just return uh, an anonymous function to tell the cron system to run on the first execution of our code. Now, after that, <clears throat> we can come down the very bottom and, well, actually, before we come down the very bottom, we're just going to say const uh, interval. And now this is a millisecond amount. And so I'm going to say every 5,000 milliseconds, which is every five seconds. And if we come down the bottom, we can just say cron, pass it the interval and the function, which is run. And now we should see this execute every five seconds. So it's going to wait five seconds. And just like that, we have our first execution. And so with those small lines of code, we have now executed code that will web scrape at a regular interval. And so the last logical thing to do would be to persist this information. Now you can just persist it in your file, but the issue with that is that whenever you restart your server, your, or this file, everything will be lost. But how you would do that is you could just say stored data is equal to an object. And in here, in this run function, at the end, it's just going to say, okay, so <clears throat> data is an array. So let's just make sure returns an array of objects and so we're just going to say data dot for each uh, and that's going to be website so for every website we're going to say so we want the key so const key is equal to object dot keys website zero and we can just say stored data uh, if the, the key is in stored data, so if the key already exists in the stored data, we're going to do some logic in return. And so what we're going to do is save the date time of the particular fetch as the new key. So we're going to say stored data key is equal to an object. Uh, and in this particular case, what's going to happen is we're going to give the key of the new date. So it's going to be the date of the fetch and it's going to have an associated value of website key. And so that's going to be the actual web scraped amount. So if that doesn't exist, well, actually, since it already exists, the other thing we're going to have to do is spread everything that already exists. And so that is just going to be stored data key. So now if it doesn't exist, we can just copy this down here and remove this one line right there. And so now we should pretty easily just be able to console.log stored data. And if I restart this, we will see the stored data object <clears throat> now actually accrue this information. And so you can see here's our first object instance. And so we have that and then we have the date, time and the value. 
And then when that runs once more, we have that second entry. And so it's going to persist it every five seconds. I guess it's plus two seconds of processing time. So seven seconds total, and it's going to gradually accrue this information. So <clears throat> the last thing you could do is if you really wanted to persist this to a JSON file so that it doesn't uh, get wiped or erased every time your server restarts, we can do that pretty easily by making a new file and calling this database functions javascript and so i made a video on how to implement your own json database the link is in the cards i'm just going to copy the code straight over uh, the link to this code is also in the description so you can do exactly that too but basically it's just a super simple write and read functionality so i can say const write db read db is equal to and require that database functions package so if I just pause that for a second so now in here what we're going to do is instead of using this functionality we're going to comment out stored data so every time stored every time this run works we want to wait for data to go and we're going to say <clears throat> const stored data is equal to read db that function or an empty array uh, and so if db exists it's going to read it in otherwise it's just going to set it to an empty object <clears throat> um, and so we can actually just make this even better so we're just going to say if it exists then we're going to go read db uh, otherwise it's just going to be that so the next thing we can do is swap out well actually that should now be pretty good to go and so instead we're just reading it and we have that particular object we can say uh, write db and just pass in that new object stored data and so just like that I think it should overwrite and update stored data every time this cron system runs and so we can see that we get an issue here and so it's finding no such file and so i'm actually just going to create that file so db.json uh, and i'm just going to initialize it to an empty array and so i mean an empty object and so if we start that once more five seconds we can see that it has successfully saved and if we look at in our database.json we have saved that time nicely okay cool so we have database.json for learn programming we have uh, let me just stop this code and we'll close that and see what we have okay so we have quite a long file so it's saved multiple time instances every five seconds and then we can see we have the web dev instance and we've also got those values there and so just like that we've persisted all of that data and now if i restart my server it's not immediately lost and so this is just a quick and easy alternative to using like a mongodb database or whatever you might choose to use and with that that's pretty much the end of part two persisting the data and running it at a regular interval using cron jobs once again like and sub if you enjoy the video hope it helps stay tuned for part three where we're going to serve this up as a json api using express and node.js catch you guys later peace